There are less on the people uh, because there are, there are fewer basically, activities during the Republican caucus. Basically, what the things I want to start with, though, maybe is what's really, really important is that you be at your caucus site by 7 p.m. If you're in line at 7, they have to register you. But basically, at 7 o'clock, nobody else will be allowed to participate. So you need to be there at 7. The other thing we want to encourage is that you stay to the end. Because that's when the resolutions will be moved, and a lot of people will be early. But, um, you know, the resolutions that relate particularly to people, to many of the people gathered here, one is to end the detention quota. For private industry and the U.S. government have a contract, have an agreement that there will be 34,000, maybe 33,000 foot immigrants who change every night. And this private industry isn't paid to every one of those immigrants who are detained. So what that means is there's a real profit motive in this detention uh, program. What we are trying to say is get rid of that mandate. These things should be decided on the basis of human needs on the base of if there's a legitimate community reason that somebody after going through an appropriate process is detained is not because there's a profit motive to keep 34,000 immigrants in detention every day. So um, I guess I did want to say that if they only have 30,000, they still get paid for 34 because that's the agreement. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's a pretty disturbing thing. So that's one thing that. One of the reasons we're really doing this process training is to make sure people who haven't been involved in either respective know the whole process and um, and if they're willing that there will be resolution for them. Now, before I go on, I don't even know if I said I said I have enough women. My name is Kathleen McCoy. Can I say that? Nope. And I'm with the American Citizens Center. And we have other staff, some of you will know, won't introduce yourself. Done, done a crazy amount of it. Hang in there. Hang in there. Even as it's, you know, it's 
somewhat irritating sometimes. They may have petitions, they may have things for you to sign. So just, you know, know that's going to happen, relax with your neighbors, and uh, they'll get to the meat of it pretty, pretty soon. It'll be called to order, and again, this is just so that it's not confusing, it'll be called to order by temporary care. Temporary care in your precinct will make sure the process starts. But pretty quickly after they've done, I think after they've done all that other business of you know, signing petitions and looking at other candidates, then you'll be invited to elect the permanent chair, which is usually the same as the temporary chair. And just someone to make sure the business gets done right. They'll be the ones to make sure the numbers are reported. They'll be the ones to make sure the resolutions are taken where they need to be taken. Um, so you'll vote on that, and then you know, form other business. Um, we'll get to the election of delegates. Now, in the Democratic process, the election of delegates is how you actually express your choice for the presidential candidate. At some point, they'll say, you know, in the Democratic Party right now, three primary candidates. I don't know if anybody can show up there. I don't think so. Is an independent or something? And, you have to be, that's the other thing, you have to be a registered Democrat at the Democrat caucus, Republican at the Republican caucus, and you have to be 18 by the time of the election in November to, uh, to vote even at that, at this level, I think you have to be there. People can be there as observers. Anybody can be there as an observer, just register that you're there as an observer. You won't be able to participate in the discussions or um, vote in the official meeting. But you can be there to observe, and then those who might not be 18, you know, it can be early. It could be a, a way to um, get you started. The thing about it is it can be intimidating, and so that's another reason that we do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be intimidated. It's just a bunch of slow moving. <laughs> um, processes and, you know, uh, efforts to advance the party position and so forth. So that's, that's their thing. But don't be intimidated. Don't be overwhelmed by what seems like really daunting sort of stuff. So you'll be given an opportunity, as far as I understand it, I don't understand it, does anybody else who should do it, but in the Democratic process it'll be O'Malley, Sanders, Hillary, Clinton, and they'll say, okay, Whoever for this candidate, go over here. And this is typically how it's done. Whoever for this candidate, go over here. There's a viability thing, meaning that if you, if any particular candidate doesn't have enough people in their corner, they cannot have any delegates. We'll talk a little more about that because then there's negotiating, there's trade-offs, there's all kinds of things that you know people can choose to go to um, to a different. Uh, choice, make a separate choice. We'll talk a little more about that. Um, these are called basically preference groups, so those are your candidates' preference groups. Most of the time, it's a 15% of the eligible attendees. There has to be at least 15% in any one of the candidates' corner for them to be viable, for them to have any delegates. And again, delegates is how is what moves on to the next uh, level, which is um, which is a precinct process. I'm going to do the count, county and the district and state and then the state and the national. But the delegates is how the candidate preferences move forward. Um, so if there's a hundred people there, any one of your candidates have to have at least fifteen. If somebody has fourteen. Let's, let's do A, B, and C. So A has 14. A, people who are preferencing for A are going to go and talk to people in B and C. Say, come on over. We just, we just need Warren to have another delegate. We just have to need Warren to be able to have, be represented. And the other groups, B and C, are going to say, no, no, you don't have anybody. You come here, and that will give us extra delegates. Your mission is the same as ours. You don't have a chance. Come over here. I mean, that's the kind of talk that's going to go on. I mean, that in itself seems kind of daunting. But let me say, every one of these, I see a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> every one of these candidates will have somebody at the precinct 
who is their precinct captain. Candidate A will have a precinct captain there. It's not the official Democratic Party captain, it's just for their candidate. So they'll talk with everybody in their group about their strategy. What do you think we should do? Should we go to B? Should we go to C? Or should we just hold out time for them to come to us? You know, so that kind of training will go on. Now, the number of delegates assigned to each precinct is based on, as I understand it, previous voter turnout in that precinct. So you don't have to be, you don't have to worry about that, but you just wonder, how come we got four in Santa County had eight? It's probably based on some of the precincts, it's based on a previous election. And, and I don't know the election, the last presidential election, this is my guy, <laughs> and I didn't see it in here, you know. Uh, but they know, this is again, what the uh, chair, the permanent officer, you know, they're gonna have the information, they're gonna know how many delegates can be elected out of your precinct. So your thing is to focus on who you're there to support and work with your precinct. Uh, work with your precinct captain to figure out the best strategy to advance the candidate you want. Um, can you take a little time to talk more about that? Anybody want to know a little? And I have these uh, documents that have all that information and everybody is invited to take one different sort of them if they want. It even has in here on page eight, you know, how you do the math. I, I don't really want us to get into that right now. <laughs> but um, <coughs> that's in there so that you can know everything's moving as it should. Um, so I'm gonna invite you to take these with you to review and be prepared for um, the topic. Let me ask, has anybody been receiving any calls from any of the candidate offices? Anybody? Yes. I think they call off a of voter registration list right. because I don't get them. Okay. I'm busy. Personal busy at home. So <laughs> really hard. Yeah. So if you're on one of the party lists, if you haven't been getting calls, you're going to be getting calls. Then, you know, just encouraging you to participate. And the thing about this, you know, it is Iowa. It's a very white state. It's so exciting and it's changing. You know, the Latino population is moving in, the male like population is increasing. So we don't always have to have this <laughs> very white state. But it's really important then that people who are new to the area or whose families have been here but they haven't participated, it's really important to get your voice. Otherwise, it's just the white dominant group making these decisions again. So really encourage people to get out. And um, you know, any questions you had can ask me now, you can ask later. We're getting um, names and telephone numbers from you. You can follow up and ask how things are going or if you need any more information because your participation is really important. Um, no, 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 no. no. But if you're here, you're interested. So we want to make sure you have what you need when you go, but we will be <laughs> um, So you'll finish that business, and if nobody has any questions right now about it, you know, we'll move on, but we'll open to questions anytime. Um, then there'll be, and a lot of people leave right after that point. A lot of people, you know, say, I've registered, I've voted for the person I want, now I'm leaving. And but then other things happen, like the election of committees. Um, and for my purpose in the here today, the Slackville Committee is key. So we want everybody here to stay and uh, get themselves voted onto the party platform so they can push these issues that are passed. They can push it to the next level. Um, however, to get on the platform committee, you actually have to be invited. So if you become, I don't think I said how you, how that process happens. You break up, you know, they might once or twice say, okay, let's realign, and if some candidates are going to go from A to B or C to C or something, then they take another time. When they finish that, when they have the final talk, then 
these chairs, these um, uh, people, somebody's person, will tell A, you have this many people in your group, you get two delegates. B, same thing. C, same thing. And then that group, with that group, will vote for who they want to be a delegate to go represent their choice at the next level. Okay? So there might be, depends on how big the process is, you know, two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, and then there's this group who's now becoming a delegate to go to the next level. They have an opportunity to be on some of the committees. And the committees are explained a little bit in here. Uh, there's the platform committee I've tried to talk about. And then there's the committee on committees, which is the arrangements, the, uh, the districts, and credentials. So that's to make sure, for instance, the credentials. And you don't have to know all this, but I mean, I'm just saying that's what's going to happen. The credentials is to make sure people who are delegates go up at the next level are the right people to be there. And, and the arrangements are going to make sure you have all the information you need. The districts are going to make sure sound and space is available. And the platform committee is where they're going to debate all of the uh, resolutions that come out of the different districts. So I'm going to pass this one here. Um, and I'll talk about it a little bit. And this is the one and if anybody wants the Republican version, I've also got the Republican version. So let me know. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's on the table if you don't want to admit it. Uh, what we've done with this, and we've gotten it around the state, is just listed like three talking points. The resolution itself is very simple. Uh, this is on the right side. Here, you want to take this one so, so that I can have it? Uh, the resolution itself is very simple. But you're going to have an opportunity to talk about it. So we're giving you some talking points. The resolution is uh, the DEF, the Democratic, the Republican Party, one of them. Um, the Democratic Party goes on record to call for elimination of U.S. immigrant detention quota mandate. So this is going to come to them. We hope it comes to them from 100 different precincts. And it's going to be really hard when it gets to the platform committee to turn it down if they've got 100 calls for this. And then above that, we have the talking points. Form of mandating U.S. pay for a specific number of immigrants in detention. So this is a pro-profit uh, pro issue, not Democrats' issue, or Republican issue. Um, quotas require immigration and customs to detain 34,000 immigrants. Community-based alternatives are less expensive, and people are going together with both those parties. So those are just talking points when you make your plea to pass this resolution that uh, we got a little material to help you with. So that's the idea. The other thing is, what we've been told by the Republican Party is anybody who brings a resolution, it'll just move forward. And I'm beginning to hear that from the Democrat Party as well. And again, I know precincts are different, so some may debate it, and some might just say, pass it forward, and we'll move it on to the next level, and then the platform committee will debate it. It's just um, a bill, you know? Sometimes it's just people asking questions if they'd never heard of that issue before. Sure. So, you know, you want to be able to speak from your heart about why that's an important issue to you. Um, and there'll be a limit on how long these will, and other people will have resolutions as well. Um, so that's... You know, then you say and listen to the resolutions and what you want to support and what you don't want to support. And uh, there can be some discussion and there can be adoption. So Precinct 44 <coughs> approves this resolution and moves it forward. And then it automatically goes to the next step. Um, and actually, if they don't discuss it, it has to go. If it's turned down at this level, it doesn't have to go. But it will go either if they just pass it on or if they have a discussion and it's approved. Okay, questions about resolutions? Um, that right now, the agreement between the United States government and private detention facilities is that 
site of detention facility will hold 34,000 immigrants in detention every night. And they will get paid by the government to do that. And um, whether they have 34,000 or not, they get paid for 34,000. So it's, you know, and it's similar, I mean, there's related things around the prison industry. We didn't get into that with this because our focus right now is around immigrant rights. We have immigrant rights work going on here. And that is, and what we're seeing with the, you know, raids and detentions and grabbing people out of communities. So that's why we focus on this one. <laughs> but the whole thing around private prisons is uh, one of the terrible situations. Oh, sorry. Uh, Alex, Alex. Do we have any in the state of Iowa? We do not have private detention facilities in the state of Iowa. But it's important because it's a part of the a national campaign. I will say, on, on the back side, it says governing under the influence. And I didn't explain that, but, and we won't get into it a lot. But over the last year and a half, we've had two staff working out of this office trying to inform people and challenge candidates on some of these policies wherein private profit is driving public policy. The fact that the detention industry is making so much money out of it, and then they turn around and go to Congress and lobby for more detention. Oh, we really need to do something about this immigration problem. I think we should, we should up it to 40,000 a year. I mean, it's an absurd system. And it's not unlike the weapons industry. The weapons industry gives all kinds of money to the government to build this weapon or that weapon, and then they trade it around the world. Oh, now we're overwhelmed. You know, the countries have these weapons. We've got to build more weapons. So again, the weapons industry, we say, is driving a lot of public policy. The detention industry and others who profit from immigrant detention are driving U.S. immigration policy with other players, but that's the Can you identify some resources in the that format? On the yellow sheet, you know, uh, look at our website, um, afsc.org, D-U-I. They've got some information on it. AFSC. On Monday, we're doing a caravan to all the presidential candidates' offices with a, um,
So don't be shy about speaking up to support your candidates or your issues, and then when you're choosing delegates, you'll stand up for them. And I will say, I don't think it's going to be a very big competition. <laughs> a few people, maybe you'll have three spots, and I mean, maybe you'll have two spots and only two people want to get And then you could be an alternate. They'll take as many, typically they'll take as many alternates who want to go. I'm just saying it's not likely to be a hot, hotly contested uh, run for being a delegate. You know, and we're all busy, and uh, it's a sacrifice. It's going to take some of your time, but it's important. So if you can craft out the time, then step forward and, and go for that. That'd be awesome. And I think several would get the same uh, repeating official <laughs> Yes, then when you go through, you're right, and it can be tedious. And if you've done it a thousand times, then it's time for some younger people to step up, right? But don't be shy, you've got stuff to offer. But I'm saying there's a place for everybody in this process. And it's true that some older folks, including myself, have done it a lot. I'd be very happy to step aside and say, this is awesome. we got a couple young people who want to do it. So let's make sure we give it to young people. And We'll continue to work with anybody who wants more training, more work on that. Uh, connect with your candidate's office, whatever you really like them, and say, I need to know more how to push this candidate forward. Um, as I said, we're nonpartisan. We can't support one or the other or either party. But so we're kind of trying to keep the focus on the process and say, if you care about one of the candidates, can't take it off of them. Uh, and when you're there, listen to whoever the patron Captain is for that candidate and contribute your thoughts about what's next step, what should we be doing, who should we support, you know, that sort of thing. So um, it is very exciting to see a lot of young people here, by the way. It really is. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked And not, you know, if you stand for your candidate, don't move. Mm -hmm. Stay right there and get as many people to be on your side so that you can be viable. The math is not my thing. I have someone who was doing the math, but they knew the total of people and the percentage that we needed to um, to be viable, meaning to have to be able to send forward a delegate for the county convention. Um, and, and it's, you know. I'm from Honduras. I never participated in the election there because it was really scary down there. But um, but I I feel very comfortable, you know, standing up for whatever I believe in in, in here because I'm not going to get shot. At least not this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, you know while I was just hearing you say that, I feel like I need to come today to kind of get a refresher. But it was a lot like that. It was, you know, you sit there and you, um, you know, in a way, make connections with, with your neighbors, and then uh, hopefully they'll see that you know that you are eager to participate. So sometimes they nominate you. That's what happened to me. And I was just talking, and then uh, made our way to the stage. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's a good opening out. Just go connect things. And, uh, in a way, you know, I know that there's not a lot of information on on, on this part, but I think it's, it's it's pretty much, you know, very. It's a very easy argument to make. I mean, especially nowadays that we're talking about our economy and our government, you know, taking a lot of control of our lives. Well, that's another example. Of, yeah, and that's such a good point that people will have their own reasons to support this. I don't even know because I'm in a triple
Canivote.com is one of those websites. That's easy. So I need you to type it in this one. Yeah, canivote.com. And the Iowa Secretary of State has a place where you can put your address and you can find your phone from where you're going to go. Uh, Iowa Secretary of State. Yeah, that, that works nationwide.
That they're totally separate. They're in separate places. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
time, but yeah, they pretty much go with the idea that they want. And that I will look for some more to find out uh, who the candidates are, are sending mainly stuff and they are saying this or that. But it's much better if you were as a citizen, you do your own research to find factual information that you can make an informed decision when you go to a process or when you go to vote. Thank you. The other thing to say is that as a nonpartisan organization, we couldn't even be here like a presentation about the right. in, in either of the parties. You can't get up and say, oh, here's what this guy stands for, and this guy, and this woman, and then you've got to say, here's what they stand for, and this guy. We can't do that because our bias might come through. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's not part of what this is. This is to talk about the process. Go visit their offices, have a conversation. That's it. You're taking this responsibility very seriously. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, you can go look in where they where they from, yeah. and you go talk to them personally and listen to them personally. That's better than the ads on TV, which are uh, bogus. Yeah. You know, and you go out there. break out into the groups. One person who was in this group. We're trying to get those who have not made a decision to go to which group. We really are looking out for you. Now, this is the, this is the very first. We have cookies. First, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going with the cookies. <laughs> Yeah, my God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I did. We're okay right now, and we need four to be viable, so we're viable. Yes. One, two, three, four. Now we've got two more. So can we get two more from there? So there's two more from there. Two more from there. Two more from there. Two more so there are two, no, two groups, so this group will try to get 
one or two from this group over here to join them. And that is that is what I actually experienced when I participated in the 2008 caucus when there were over a hundred in my precinct alone. And we were, uh, is it behind the table? Oops, I, maybe she forgot to put one in here. I think there's one in that cabinet or out, out there there's one. You could you could use say pick you could pick maybe even uh, just use other people from other countries names from other countries. <laughs> or or you or you could use a sports team. You, you could use your favorite sports team. That could be another. Well, just just you know just for the sake of using a name. An example of that could be in 2008, I participated in the Democratic caucus, and there were several candidates, Obama, uh, Clinton, and others, and there were well over 100 people. Then in 2012, in my precinct alone, there were just six. That's, that's correct. It changes from time, changes from caucus, year to caucus year. That's right. Last year, in Fort uh, County, there were only less than 2,000 people going no, it, it's it's below the county level. It's smaller. Yeah. 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 then county, then the uh, region, then state. And then from the state to the national. Because the national convention. Yeah. Right. And that's where they choose the person that goes. The final choice for a nominee. For Who are you representing? We are representing candidate A who is a woman. I thought you were giving a name. Okay. <laughs> Ellen, Ellen, they are so for this purpose they've chosen uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres is a TV host and comedian. Hello. 
So I'm going back over to this group. They're doing a practice. A practice. Okay, that's you. 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 Okay, how are you? Good. I'm actually with the birdie heavy. I wouldn't have guessed it. <laughs> no, right, we're doing uh, pretend pockets right now. Okay, cool. So, um, did you come actually for the caucus or did you come to speak for Bernie? Or did you so they're all the events. All right. Well, they're uh, we're broken up and we're gonna go. Three minutes is up. We're coming. Is that part of the caucus? Yeah. They they we broke out. And they were A, we were B, we didn't have a C, so that one's our Bible. <laughs> and now we've taken a Well, there wasn't a C? Well, all of, I think... And th I think that may be the case. Well, huh? instead of using a name, they just use the A, B, and C to represent, like, three candidates. <laughs> there was a C, so there's a case where there's some reason I buy them. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's time to rewind. Okay, folks, this is what will happen there. Can I have the attention of B and whomever that's now? This is what will happen. You won't go on forever. They'll say it's time to realign. You've got five minutes to talk to the other groups and see if you can make a change. You've got five minutes. Who's, uh, you're supposed to go on. Realigning means that, uh, say, if a group, a group from one candidate will try to persuade a group that has chosen to support another candidate to join them, and you know, vice versa. So when uh, I participated in the 2008 caucus, I joined the group for Obama, and I went to the others to try to persuade them to join the group that supported Obama. And of course, in 2012, there was no, uh, there was no. Uh, competition, so we didn't even bother with that. We went straight to delegates, resolutions, and all that. Because you know what happens at the caucus? They're only going to give you a certain amount of time. They'll say you got five minutes for a session, and then try and get people to come to your side. So we're in that point of trying to get people to come to your side. B sent over two representatives to talk with you. Okay. Remember that we said that we said not to, we said more. Okay. We said you need, we've just made the determination that you need four people to be viable. So you've got nine people. You have an extra person there. Yeah. And we want that. It doesn't matter. There's no law that says that we cannot have more than one viable. We can have as many as we want. Don't go anywhere. Oh, well. You may want to change your mind. My name is Alba, and this is Hazul. Why do you speak to you about Salma Hayek? We support Salma Hayek. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Salma Hayek, they're using the name of an actress for the purposes of this uh, demonstration. This is an example of a realignment. We got one and we lost one. Are you sure that 
because you want to go be happy. I got telling you. Time to realign. Go to your you can, you can. go to your party. We're here to um, advocate for the highest. Because Selma has invested a lot of her wealth. Where did you it, <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't even. I couldn't. He just came to us. It was easy. So I, I can get more. So Jesus and I, Jesus and I are here to uh, tell you that Selma Hayek is really a great human being who has invested a lot of her wealth in the poor people and has invested a lot on the vulnerable people. So we want you to come out and support Selma Hayek because we think that we can win. Um, at the convention, and we were well represented. We have right. bilingual people. We have yeah. people who yeah. have a lot of experience. You can't talk on the topic. Uh, so come on, let's go. You don't have to stay here. We are going to show him a picture of Selma Hayek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get a picture of Selma Hayek. <laughs> come on, come on, Jesus. Okay, here, here. And I'll go search. Do a search. Do a search. Do a search. Uh, so anyway, she's a great human being. She supports children, she supports the most vulnerable, and I was very proud of you. I mean, who are you? Who are you? We are you? Who 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 are you? Okay. Thirty seconds, folks. Count on. Okay. okay. I'm with you, so we. Oh yeah, you're with us. Oh good. Okay. 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 So. <laughs> the next thing would be to choose who would like, and we're not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm saying then the next thing would be, okay, okay this is great, you really spoke well for our candidates, who would like to go to the next one, who would like to and represent this person, Selma, 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 okay, who wants to be a delegate and represent this person? You're being nominated. Are you willing to do that? We need one more person. Because remember, you can also do the board resolution. Or people can just say they want to do that. That's my question. The last time I did that, we had the Indian Party. Did you ask them to do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, let's say our, our precinct has three votes, so it's five votes. Yes. And I think we've each got eight people. Yeah. Were you in our group? I was, but you oh, know, whatever okay. works. No, you're still in the group, so there are nine of them. All right, well, then I, I, I get that. Okay, then if, say, there's three votes, then we're going to get one. We're going to get two, even though we just had one extra person. Yeah. Two okay. delegates. That's why. Uh, yeah. Delegates, right. Oh, okay. okay, so that's why we still need somebody to... Um, take it to the next step. Who wants to be a delegate? It may still be a private. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get a picture of our delegates. <laughs> okay. Look at these two women on the move. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then there'll be some more stuff, but that's then they'll be in touch with both of you and give you information for the next level. Okay. Um, okay. That there were like over a hundred people in my precinct alone in 2008. Yeah. Huh. And so there were a couple of like three or four different realignments before it was done. And they had trouble head counting because you know, they were doing actual counting heads, and so but they had to do it a few times just to make, be sure of accuracy. 
and in that area where you lived, you were the only. No, but yeah. People were pressing. Yeah, because the number of delegates. Yeah. Yeah. I think my be the only one in my <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, if it's just you in the caucus chair, well, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm not sure no, how no, that no, of color, person of color. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works if if no one or just one or two people show up for a precinct. How that how that works? Because yeah. I've never been in that situation. It's, it's still it's not in like for example in Western Iowa where there's like eight tiny tiny towns like Lyon County. Yeah. yeah. But they have to so count them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Of course, if no people show up, then <laughs> that's, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a formula, it's a percentage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So if 100 show up, 15% yeah. is all of the people. Right. Okay, so at how many delegates come out of 100? I'm not going to answer this. Well, it's a, it's some complicated formula where you and, oh. have it, where you have it memorized. But yeah, you got to like, there's like this whole formula. But it is based on number of people who show up. That's where the percentages come from. So if you have 10 people there and they split up in which way, you can still do the math. Oh, wow. But in very small towns, in rural places yeah. in the state, that happens all the time. Wow. But I, and I think it is, if, if, if 100 show up, so that would make so this uh, would be a topic that we should be inviting six people to later. If you can, um, you know, if you, you know, yeah. you can we can you can no, you no, the number of delegates we should think yeah. about how we want to shape it. Your precinct, like how many people show up? Right. You know, we want. Oh, okay. So in other words, so they can if, you, if you get a million people show up in your field, yeah. you're not going to get any more delegates. Okay. Whatever it was in that field, it'll be the election after that that the million people will have new flags. Yep. Like they say in Spanish, they mean in the water to the You never heard that, but I You never heard that much either. Yeah. And I don't know how to translate. We got a young there are just some words that you just cannot uh, really put well into English no, from know. Spanish. Yeah. Or the other way around. I'm going to go back over here. <laughs> I have chosen two people. So that's basically how it would end. I think we would have to, as a group, endorse in all of the delegates and the resolutions. And then you'll go home. Which would be a month or six weeks away. Thank you. And we'll be in touch. Okay. I'm going to set this down. I'm actually going to stick around. Let's see what they're doing next. So I'm going to stay live. While I take a short break between. Uh, Activities. Now I'm gonna get some more cider. Yeah. 
Okay, so get there early. She is uh, talking about Bernie Sanders. Oop, I'm going to angle this. I don't want to cut her head off, but I'm just trying to adjust to get the light better. So, I was just telling her about the, the rally that I went to, the last Bernie rally that I streamed. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as, as the Kathleen said, the American Friend Service Committee is you know, the way they do things. They are nonpartisan, but yet they burden all candidates about issues. And uh, they, uh, so they will not do a candidate endorsement. Individual church members may do so on their own. Uh, they will decide who they vote for, but as, as a whole group, American Friends Service Committee will not uh, make an endorsement of a candidate, unlike what Iowa Citizens and Community Improvement did when they chose to endorse Bernie Sanders. I probably will. <laughs> I have heard the other way around too. Like, oh, I am going to vote for the people. That's why you guys are talking about the band. Yeah, we are going to be doing all this, but this one I wanted to expose. Maybe there isn't going to be anything else. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll stay alive for a little while and just see what happens. I mean, I so Actually, what she is doing by talking about Buddy Sanders, she is also demonstrating what a campaign representative or precinct captain will do during the caucus is uh, talk to the caucus participants about the candidate they support and why uh, uh, attendees should support that particular candidate. That was in 2008, where before we broke up into the individual groups. Okay, then go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I am so sorry, but we can have the normal rights presentation. If you want to stay for that, you are more than welcome. You are more than welcome to stay. Um, the normal rights is an important presentation for anyone, really. If it applies to all citizens or immigrants or refugees, so you're welcome to stay. If you don't want to stay, you're also welcome to go. And I am very happy. We go younger friends. And people from different countries. I am just so proud. Take care and good job. You are you are our future. So keep going. Okay? Thank you so much. Welcome, bienvenida. So this will be, I'll go ahead and stay for this. She is just giving me some way know your rights. It's political and civil rights. No sé qué hacer, si lo ponemos el redondo o el Así como está, ok, entonces no sé qué There will be some Spanish here. Okay, um, we're going to be here. Yeah, we are not going to be so. Right, right, right. Please, uh, right, right. Uh, <laughs> give space for the next group. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. 
Ahí hay que ir a calientita, si quiere. Hola, ¿cómo está? Adiós. Speak Spanish, English. Adiós. I don't expect this to last very long. belong to it. Well, I'm going to put it on my website. 
that okay? The Latino Forum, um, Latino Forum, the Latino Center Board, I don't know if um, they have, it's Marina. There was a, there was a group, uh, something about like a United Latino Citizens or something like that, that I saw at the event over at First Christian. What are you talking about? Latinos, um, LULAC. Or yeah. Unidos. Yeah. Yeah. Lulac, we're not involved. I'm not. I'm not. I never will be. I don't Me think. Neither. But that was just one that I saw there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that Latino Center is really good. And uh, let that? me give you my card. I'm on the board of the Latino I'm in the Latino board. Forum. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we can send you an array. Um, I yeah. think we, we don't have any more openings in our lives. It would be nice to have it's a It's at the bottom. It's a leadership development program um, for young Latina women. Uh, yeah, women between 20 and 40. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, not too many people stick around. No, uh, we, 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 we we have have been, it's a different one. Yeah, When is that going to start? Supposedly, it was going to start. Yeah, like I said. No more people show up, then we will call it a day. Hello. Good. I was, I live streamed that uh, caucus training, and I'm just still live. So, yeah. <laughs> so if enough people show up for this uh, know your rights thing, then I'll stay live. Otherwise, uh, as you said, you know, yeah. Call it good and go home. <laughs> On live stream protests, uh, you know, I was at the Capitol, and live streaming there. I yeah, I have YouTube, and I'm using UStream to to do my live broadcasts. And then when I get home, I tell UStream to put it up on my YouTube channel. Mucho frío. <laughs> it's very cold. Yeah. I studied Spanish for five and a half years in high school and college back in the 80s. Really? Yeah, and I spent a month in Guadalajara back in 86. Oh, wow, that's nice. So you studied and then you went to go actually, yeah, I actually, abroad? Yeah, I actually got to go down to Guadalajara for a month. And part of that time we spent one week in Mexico City. But we were down there the summer after the 85 earthquakes. Oh, wow. So we saw some of the earthquake damage. And we were going to go into the presidential palace to take a tour. Yeah. But we could only go into a few parts of it because scaffolding blocked off the rest of the public areas because they were doing repairs. Because that building took some damage from the earthquakes. Oh, wow. Yeah, September 85, two eight plus magnitude quakes really sh- shook the crap out of the city. It flattened two hospitals. And yeah, I mean, it was bad. I mean, the city is built on what used to be a lake bed, so the ground is kind of soft. It's not real firm. And uh, 
So if you go in the area of the Socolo to the original Basilica de Guadalupe, mm -hmm. they had to put steps to go down to it. And then the earthquake kind of did some extra damage, so they just closed it and built a new one. Okay. We are going to wait just four more minutes. Si no, hacemos una breve, breve explicación para que se vayan más temprano. Porque creo que hubo una confusión de que algunas personas pensaron que era Thank you so much. Yeah. 
See if anyone else will show up for this. So it's small teaching institution about uh, knowing the knowledge. But waiting for people to just show up. And if not, they're just going to can it and call it a day and go home. Okay. Okay. Go O'Malley. Go O'Malley. So the one who is leaving supports the Martin O'Malley. I guess it looks like this is going to be a flop. Yeah, and it's... Well, it doesn't help those who really need to know this stuff. Yeah, it would have been good to have this on the video for a later viewing, but uh, oh well. Así se la vida. Lo primero que sí quiero, lo primero que quiero es cuáles son las nuevas. 
nuevas tácticas que está usando en migración para hacer más Algunos casos incluso 
mucho, mucho. Me la tuvo una matrícula con por ejemplo, yo tengo doble naturaleza. Sí, 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 pero eso sí puede crear sospechas para la sociedad. Entonces, ¿quién puede hacerlo? Y va a ser mi responsabilidad, en el caso de mi migración, decir, ¿quién puede probar que está mal? Entonces, yo ahí sería la oportunidad de hacerlo cuando le diga, quiero ver a un juez de la ciudad. O que lo haga un abogado o abogada de la migración para que lo haga. Para que lo haga. Having a lawyer, who specializes in immigration issues, pleasant to get your life. Well, either you are a legal resident or a citizen, which is too easy for us. You can still have your rights violated. You could be accused of having false documents. Well, that's something else. You know, she's always saying, if you have copies, make a copy of any document or card that identifies you as a resident or such as your a driver's license, a passport, birth certificate. If you're a woman in this country, yeah, make a copy of your U.S. birth certificate. So yeah, I would make a copy of my Nebraska. And you know, make copies of, say, a citizenship paper if you're naturalized. Yeah, even, even copy of that. Yeah, anything like that. Stop and keep them. My advice is keep them in different. Okay. 
Si hay una persona viviendo en la casa y esa orden de arresto en efecto no a una persona que está viviendo en su casa, le piden a la persona que ustedes quieren que salga esa persona sola. O si no quiere, simplemente no los dejan entrar porque no, una orden de arresto no les autoriza entrar a su casa. Apartamento, trailer, lo que sea. No les autoriza. Pero si les dice, tengo una orden de registro por, firmada por el juez, ahí sí tienen la obligación de que lo que deben de hacer es decirles, ok, oficial, ya vimos, este, este, trae una orden de registro, pásela por favor por abajo de la puerta. En este caso sí cabe, a mí me pasa, pasan, toman la orden, ustedes aquí adentro, y se fijan que efectivamente tengo un sello y una firma de un juez, una fecha reciente y la dirección correcta de su casa y que diga específicamente qué cosas sí pueden registrar. Porque hay veces que nada más van a ir por una persona o hay veces que nada más quieren registrar, digamos, una habitación. ¿Ok? Eso no significa que ustedes no tengan que registrar toda la casa. Hay otras órdenes de registro que son muy extensas. Que dicen que pueden registrar a todas las personas que estén dentro de esa habitación o esa casa. Se pueden registrar todos los autos, se pueden registrar las monedas, se pueden registrar todos los muebles, se pueden registrar documentos y que pueden incautar computadoras y cualquier cosa que se refiere en el uso. ¿Qué van a hacer ustedes si nada están buscando una persona, pero hay otras dos o tres personas ahí? ¿Qué más van a hacer? ¿Qué 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 van a hacer? Si se les nunca contestaron a la puerta, ellos pueden abrir si tienen una orden de cateo, una orden de registro, ellos pueden abrir la puerta de la puerta. Si tienen una orden de registro. Así que si ellos les muestran una orden de registro, la que no les hagan daño a su propiedad, es mejor que ya vayan. Ahora, si está nada más una persona, está buscando nada más a cierta persona en la orden, entonces le dicen a esta persona, por favor, salte, no se puede decir lo que sea. Ok, no me vas a abrir la puerta, pero va a salir la persona que ustedes están buscando. Va en un momento, por favor, no ingresen, ahí va esta persona. La persona que dice que está bien, cerrar inmediatamente para no poner en riesgo a los demás. Solo si están buscando a una persona. Pues si dicen que están queriendo registrar toda la propiedad, deben de abrir la puerta de su casa para permitirles que registren toda la propiedad. Esa es la razón por la que existen de
una ra causa razonable para su van a poner en cosas o, o esas cosas de plástico que les ponen no opongan resistencia para que no les lastime se los lleva y va a decir deseo invocar mi derecho a mantener silencio ¿cómo se llama? me llamo Sandra Sánchez deseo invocar el derecho a mantener silencio y hacer una llamada yo no tengo derecho a hacer ninguna llamada y yo sé que tengo derecho a hacer una llamada y voy a seguir diciendo eso continuamente invoco mi derecho a mantener silencio y deseo hacer mi llamada hacemos con frecuencia. Estamos bien dedicados a el teléfono celular, tenemos todos nuestros contactos, ¿verdad? ¿Ustedes creen que me van a dejar entrar a la cárcel con el teléfono celular, mi cartera, mi bolsa y todo lo demás? No. Si llevo cualquiera de esas cosas conmigo, las van a quitar al momento en que me registro. Y si yo confío todos mis números de teléfono a mi teléfono, ¿a quién me voy a llamar? Porque eso es lo que está pasando hoy en día. Se saben de memoria el teléfono de su casa, se saben de memoria el teléfono de sus familiares, se saben el teléfono de memoria de un abogado de inmigración. Pues muy probablemente no. Pues mi recomendación es que aprendan dos números de teléfono de familiares de confianza, que sean adultos y que sepan que si pueden contar con sí. ellos, o amigos o compañeros de trabajo, por lo menos dos, y el número de un abogado o abogada de inmigración en caso de que estén tratando con inmigración. Aún si no están tratando con inmigración, esa persona puede poner en comunicación con otro abogado que se dedique so a cualquier one, situación que ustedes estén enfrentando, ya sea criminal o civil. ¿Ok? Entonces, muy importante one, que se lleven esto. Team. Pregunta. Ay, ¿a poco no tiene ninguna pregunta? <risa> Ese también, ¿eh? Una cosa muy rara. Ok. Voy a contar un ejemplo. Yo que se quiere en esta casa, si no necesitan esto, no tienen nada disponible, quiero que se lleven también este otro recurso, que es su plan de acción. Esta es la guía para hacer un plan de acción, que es muy importante. ¿Qué vamos a hacer en nuestro plan de acción? Nuestro plan de acción le vamos a hacer una vez a nosotros tenemos que pagar por nuestro propio abogado. Solamente And cuando se nos presentan cargos criminales, if, entonces if sí podemos solicitarle a la corte que nos nombre a un abogado de eh, público, de defensor público, que no les cuesta nada. In court. And I have ¿Por qué? Porque tengan bajo nuestro Pero si yo estoy haciendo so nuestro right. Muy importante que sepan el nombre de un abogado, por lo menos uno y su teléfono. Porque a veces los entrampan diciéndole, si no me das, ¿cuál es el número de tu abogado y cuál es su nombre? ¿Qué es lo que hacemos con frecuencia en nuestra comunidad? Si ustedes en la comunidad preguntan acerca de mí y le dicen, no, pues vaya con Sandra. 
o pueden ir a la escuela y pueden llegar a la escuela y pedir que van a recoger a ese niño o a esa niña. ¿Por qué? Porque están en la lista de compartir de emergencia. Otra cosa que es muy importante es tener un formulario G28. Este formulario G28 firmado por cada miembro de la familia que pueda estar en riesgo de ser arrestado por crimen de inmigración. ¿Qué es la forma G28? La forma G28 es un formulario donde le damos autorización a un abogado o abogada de inmigración a que nos represente. No es necesario que sepamos este nombre, a menos que ya tengamos un contrato de servicio con esta persona. Pero si no lo tiene, usted puede dejar firmada la forma G28 y dejársela a su familia y decirle, ok, llega a tener un contrato de servicio para que el abogado o abogada de inmigración me represente a quien me encuentre. ¿Okay? Y de esa manera ustedes ya pueden saberlo. ¿no? Y cuando la persona vuelva a llamar, le vas a dar la información, ok, te va a ir a representar la persona fulana de tal, el abogado X, eh, y va a ir a, a hablar contigo mañana a tal hora. Lo deben de llevar a los abogados este formulario. Le sacan una copia y pueden siempre sacar copias de los documentos importantes. ¿Preguntas? No, ok. Ahora, una vez que ya tengan listo su plan de acción, es importante que dejen una copia a un familiar que no viva en su casa. Porque al mismo caso, usted ya a toda la familia. ¿Ok? Entonces, ¿qué es lo que ha dicho? Entonces, ya está listo. 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 Ya Some of the 
papers that she has, has the information on the protecting her rights. live stream this. So I'm going to go put this up on YouTube when I get home. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I will. I'll post it, I'll post it on uh, Facebook. Um, I don't know. But I put my name down on that list. You got it. Then I got it. But I'll, I'll post it on Facebook. And yeah. on Facebook, my name is just Kaylin Lee Strain. Perfect. No, I don't. That's the fourth time I've been after a card. I need to get some. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't have the money right now. I get it. But I am going to do it soon. I know how that goes. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stream down. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the stream.